Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring the last BlackBerry smartphone ever released, the Key 2 LE. It launched as a cheaper version of the Key 2 and was released in October of 2018. This particular one is an Atomic Red version with dual SIM slots and 64 gigs of storage. However, it's a little worse for wear. The screen is smashed, the frame has some scraping, and it's had some water damage. Despite being almost three years old and running Android 8.1, these phones are still fetching between $600 and $750 in good working condition. I imported this one from the US for only $240. A fair portion of that money went to the shipping and import charges that eBay charged me. Once it arrived, I could unpack it and take a look at what I got. In a world where most of the smartphones look the same, it's really nice to have some that just look a little bit different, and that's why I've always liked these Blackberries. After unpacking it, I can power it up and test it out. After booting up, the setup was asking for a pin code. All I had to do was enter it. Afterwards, I could continue on completing the setup. To repair this BlackBerry, I will be needing a new display, and for $71, I got a screen with a new frame attached. It was advertised as being an original part. While it's probably just as easy to replace the display without getting a new frame, I wanted to make the phone look perfect. To begin, I'll need to start by heating up the back of the BlackBerry, because that's right, unlike previous models, the back is actually held on with adhesive. And given the rubberized texture on the back, using a suction cup won't work, so you just have to dig in with a plastic pick and start prying. As there was no repair manuals or even photos of the inside of this phone, I had no idea what to expect. Although in comparison to previous BlackBerry models, the back was already proving more challenging to remove. Thankfully though, it's not glass, so it doesn't shatter if you pry at it too hard. That being said, it is using less adhesive than found on most Android phones. But once I had it off, we could get our first look at the inside of the device. At a first glance, there isn't much to see. Just some plastic shielding, metal shielding, and some leftover adhesive. I'm going to remove that leftover adhesive before we continue, just to make sure there's no hidden screws underneath. There wasn't, so we can proceed. I'll remove the several Phillips head screws from this NFC antenna before we can remove it from the phone. While this phone is BlackBerry branded, it was actually manufactured by TCL, the same company that's known for making TVs. Unlike any phone I've ever seen before, this NFC antenna was not only held down by screws and plastic clips, but also a small portion of adhesive on the left-hand side. This made its removal more difficult. I could disconnect the battery, as well as the volume and power button flex cable, before we can proceed by getting access to our battery. To do that, we'll need to remove more Phillips head screws on both the sides and lower portion of the phone. I find this a very strange design, as there is a giant metal shield covering up the battery. Although, it's not actually holding it in place because it's still adhered down. It would have been awesome to see a very light amount of adhesive and the metal plate doing most of the work holding in the battery. Although that wasn't the case, and this battery was still very well glued in place. After removing the plastic pull tabs, I thought I would insert a plastic pick to remove the battery the rest of the way. We'll be reusing both the battery and this plastic cradle when it comes time to reassemble. I performed a battery test on the phone with it connected to Wi-Fi and the mobile network. It lasted eight days in standby, so there doesn't appear to be any issue with the battery. After reinstalling it in the cradle, we'll put it aside for later. It's now time to get this motherboard out. I'll start by disconnecting the several antenna cables on the right hand side before disconnecting the two main flex cables going to the lower portion of the phone. After removing the SIM card tray, we can begin lifting up the motherboard. Underneath is a cable for the proximity sensor which we'll need to remove from the frame. With it out, we can see our motherboard in full. Around back, you'll find the 64 gigs of storage and the Qualcomm 636 processor. With the motherboard out, we can now extract the earpiece up top before moving down to the lower portion of the phone 
where I'm going to remove the speaker by removing these four Phillips head screws. This is where we get a first look at the damage caused by some kind of liquid. I don't exactly know what this mess is, but it looks as though someone's dropped this phone in mud or something similar. We'll definitely have to do something about that before we reinstall it. Spraying on some alcohol, I can then use a toothbrush to brush away all of that dirt and grime that's built up on this little piece of plastic. Whilst being dirty, there's no corrosion, so none of this stuff poses any sort of risk to the phone. Although it's time to keep digging. Next to come out is this flex cable. After unplugging its two connections, it's only adhered down into place, so carefully removing it, it comes out as one piece. Up at the top, I noticed that this wasn't supposed to be here. This is actually one of the shields from the back of the motherboard. Although the reason it was stuck in the frame is, you guessed it, they adhered it down. After removing it, it's time to move back down to the lower portion of the phone where I can get out the charging port. This looks a lot easier than it really was. It's only adhered down in place and given just how thin this PCB is, I was kind of worried that I would snap it. Although with plenty of flexing later, it came out in one piece. I thought I'd give it a clean off before we continue on. Flipping our attention over to the front side of the phone, I'll need to remove this plastic piece down at the lower portion of the keyboard. It is adhered into place, but underneath is two screws that we'll need to remove to get out our keyboard. This will need to be transferred to our new frame, so we'll need to remove it carefully. This also proved challenging as it's also glued down in place. It's important to make sure the pick is going underneath the keyboard and not in between the backlight layer. With a careful amount of prying, it come off the phone. Taking it out, you can see it's also got some evidence of liquid damage. So I'll use some alcohol and a toothbrush to brush away any of the dirt that was left on the back of this keyboard. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper, not only to see just how this keyboard works, but to give it a clean. To no surprise, there was also some mud in here. Using the same toothbrush and alcohol method, I was able to clean it up quite nicely. While I did have some ideas to modify this keyboard and do something custom and cool with it, it didn't work out. So I'll just reassemble it as is and reconnect the fingerprint flex cable. And with that, we fully disassembled our BlackBerry Key 2 LE. It's now time to reassemble it in our new frame. Of course, starting with the keyboard, it simply clips and screws down back into place. Back on the inside, I can install the charging port assembly. After that's in, I'll need to route its wires before proceeding to remove the protective film over the adhesive so I can reconnect the interconnect flex cable that goes between the charging port and keyboard to the main motherboard. Next to go in is our cleaned speaker assembly, which will need to be fastened in at the lower portion only. I'll need to reinstall the missing shield on the motherboard before we can get it installed in the phone. For proper disassembly and reinstallation of this phone, you need to remove the cameras from the board first. This provides access to the proximity sensor cable, which needs to be aligned correctly to ensure auto brightness and the screen will shut off during calls. After it's installed, I can reconnect our two cameras and proceed by connecting all of the cables connecting to our motherboard. While the screen was advertised as an original part, it's clearly not. The display's cable doesn't have the same text on it and the cable itself turned out to be too long, although that's better than too short. I was able to get around this issue by tucking the cable into the little recess behind the display. We're finally at a stage where we can test out the phone and see what our not so original display looks like. After powering it on, you can see, well, at least we're getting a picture. At first, I thought the screen brightness was significantly degraded and the overall quality was washed out and nowhere near like the original. Although after a closer inspection, it turns out I had the ambient brightness turned on, which means I wasn't able to harness the full display's brightness. After disabling that feature, the display's brightness is correct, although the colors are slightly less saturated than the original display. 
However, with that being said, I would still class this as a good replacement display, even if I was intentionally misled. Whilst reassembling, I realized I missed two screws which hold the keyboard in underneath the speaker assembly, so after putting those back in, I could proceed with the reassembly process. This phone was starting to take shape, and after reinstalling the several screws, securing in this shield covering up the battery, I could proceed by reinstalling this flex cable for the volume buttons, power button, and the convenience key. After a quick clean to get rid of any of my fingerprints or dirt left inside the device, I could reinstall the NFC antenna and its several Phillips head screws. All that's left to do now is to prep our rear panel and get it reinstalled. This phone has really stepped up on the adhesive compared to previous Android Blackberries, such as the Key One and the Blackberry Priv. The back panel does have a few clips holding it in at the top and bottom, but the majority of it is adhesive, which is a shame to see, but it's still not the end of the world when it comes to phone repairs. I will do my best to recreate the adhesive patterns to make sure the back panel is held on securely. There is also some adhesive needed for the sides, but I will apply that to the phone itself. Removing all of the protective film over the adhesive we've just applied, I can now line up and press into place the rear panel for the BlackBerry Key 2 LE. Once it's all clipped and adhered into place, we're not done just yet. We need to apply adhesive to the lower portion of the keyboard where I can reattach the little plastic trim that hides the screws for the keyboard. After pressing that down into place, I'll need to insert the SIM card tray to the side of the phone, and lastly, remove the protective film from the display, and we're done. So this is it, the BlackBerry Key 2 LE, a phone like no other modern smartphone. In a world where companies follow each other's designs, BlackBerry has stuck to what they believe a phone should look like. And I love it. With its black and red design and 35 keys, it's a very bold phone that stands out from the crowd, like foldables, except not as fragile. While it is the newest BlackBerry ever released and it's currently discontinued, there is still hope, with new BlackBerry branded devices teased to launch in 2021, although the wait still continues. I'm able to touch type on this phone without even looking at the phone itself, all thanks to those physical keys. And those keys are used for more than just typing. With each letter key supporting two shortcuts, that makes for a whopping 50 different programmable shortcuts for apps, doing tasks, or speed dial. And just in case you wanted one more, there's also a programmable key on the side of the phone. Of course, this isn't a phone for everyone, but I really hope we eventually get another. If you were or are a BlackBerry user, leave a comment down below letting us know what model you had. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which will be down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.